Hi guys, Mr. Newmobile here. Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus and comes with S Pen. During an unpacked event that featured the announcement of five key new devices, the Galaxy Tab S7 didn't get a ton of love. Understandable, perhaps. It doesn't quite have the star power of the Note line, nor does it have the novelty of a new foldable or Bluetooth earbuds. Tablets in general just aren't exciting the way they once were. But Samsung's continue to plug away. The company makes a lot of tablets. That's just kind of its thing. Why make one when you can make a dozen, each with different price points and target audiences? It's the Galaxy Tab line, however, that's always been the one to watch, providing a premium slate experience designed to complement its Galaxy handsets. In fact, in a world where Android tablets are largely the realm of budget devices, Samsung remains one of the few out there still manufacturing a device that can go head-to-head -head with the iPad. The latest model brings a number of key features, though the biggest of all isn't available on the Tab S7 Plus review unit the company sent along. The device will be among the first tablets to receive 5G connectivity. Pricing and availability are still forthcoming on that school, though, honestly, I don't imagine a ton of people are going to be demanding cellular connectivity on their tablets, as long as so many people continue working from home. When travel finally starts up again, that might be a different story. That said, the model Samsung sent along just after the unpacked event is a beast. It's the specced up version of the Tab S7 Plus, which starts at $849. The higher tier bumps the RAM up from 6GB to 8GB, and the storage from 128GB to 256GB. Add in the Bleeding Edge Snapdragon 865+, Plus, and you've got an extremely capable machine on your hands here. The design matches the premium specs. Gone is the plasticky design of early models, traded up for a sleek and sturdy glass and aluminum design. It's a tablet that looks and feels as premium as its price tag indicates. It's a bit heavy, though, at 1.26 pounds for the 12.4-inch model, versus 1.41 pounds for the 12.9-inch iPad Pro. The truth about these devices is they're no longer designed to be held up above your face as you lie in bed. They are, of course, intended to be real multitasking workplay machines. I should note that I'm writing this as someone who continues to use a laptop for all of his work, but I can certainly appreciate the advances the category has made in recent years. I also know a handful of people who have mostly successfully traded in their work machines for a tablet, be it an Android device, Surface or iPad. A tablet's worth as a work machine is, of course, only as good as its case a statement you can't reasonably make about most products. Along with the device itself, Samsung has upgraded the case in a couple of nice ways. The typing experience doesn't quite match a devoted laptop keyboard, but it's been pretty well refined. The keys have a decent amount of travel and a nice spring for a laptop cover. The leather case also detaches into two pieces, so the back can be used as a stand, without the keyboard present. Of course, the trade-off for this sort of case is the fact that it can't really be used on one's lap without things falling and pieces detaching. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be a Samsung tablet without the S Pen, of course. The peripheral is, thankfully, included. There's no slot for the stylus, something I keep asking for but never get, life's hard sometimes, but it does snap magnetically to the top of the device, albeit a bit weakly. Samsung has certainly built up a nice little ecosystem for the input device, and I'm pretty consistently impressed that it's able to recognize and convert my chicken scratch. Seriously, my already terrible penmanship has only atrophied over time. Points, too, for a beautiful OLED display with a 120Hz refresh rate. Depending on what you're looking to do with it, you might need to toggle that to save on battery life. Both models are pretty solid on that front, with 8000 and 10900 mAh, respectively, but the 5G models will no doubt take a hit. Samsung is really pushing DeX hard even harder than it has in the past. You can set it to automatically trigger the desktop approximation when you plug in the keyboard. The interface is an attempt to approximate something akin to the Windows desktop experience, but a number of apps still don't support the interface, and, over and overall it still feels clunky. It's easy to extrapolate a bit and imagine how it will improve things like multitasking, but it doesn't feel like it's quite all the way there. Snapdragon 865 Plus processor inside, plus 8GB of RAM. In my three or so days of using the tablet, I've never had a slowdown or chug, even when I'm bouncing between multiple apps and running a handful of tabs in the browser. I was able to chat with my colleagues in Slack, compose articles in our CMS, browse Twitter, watch Doug DeMuro videos, and keep up with my RSS feed, just like I do on the laptop every day of the week. Yes, technically Apple's processor is faster than the Qualcomm in a benchmark test. But in the real world, the Tab S7 Plus feels no slower than the iPad Pro. The speakers are loud and sound great Samsung put four speakers into the Tab S7 models and dolloped a bit of Dolby Atmos and AKG tuning on top. 
The result is a loud full experience that sounds great whether I'm watching a YouTube video, listening to some Spotify, or dialing into a Zoom call. The last time I was this impressed with the Speak Pro, so I'd say Samsung did well here. They are almost good enough for me to forgive Samsung for not including a headphone jack. The front camera is in the right spot look, one of the most annoying things about using an iPad as a primary computer is that, when you have to be on a video call, the camera is off to the side. You can either look at the camera or look at the people you're talking to, but not both at the same time. Samsung was smart enough to put the camera on a different edge of the screen, so when you're using it in the keyboard case the camera is on the top, not the side, just like a laptop. It's not the best camera I've ever seen, but it does run laps around most laptop webcams at this point. The keyboard case looks good, but has flaws alright, here's where I started running into some hiccups on the Tab S7 Plus. The keyboard case, which costs $230, no small sum, has some good ideas, but just as many irritations. I like how the keyboard can be separated from the tablet, and there's still a part of the case protecting the back and providing a kickstand for watching video or drawing. It's way more flexible than Apple's Magic Keyboard, which basically forces you into having all or nothing. But that flexibility comes at a price, when I try to use the Tab S7 on my lap, where it's unstable. I can make it work, but it's way less comfortable than an iPad Pro, Surface Pro, or traditional clamshell laptop on my actual lap. The keyboard and trackpad have good feel and action. I particularly like the new multi-finger gestures that let me navigate the software with swipes on the trackpad. But there are annoyances here too, such as the function row that can't be set to media controls by default. I have to press the FN key every time I want to pause music or adjust the volume. The number of times per day I need to press F9 is approximately zero while I'm adjusting volume all day long. The trackpad also has terrible palm rejection, which sends my cursor flying across the screen erratically all day long, and you can't disable the inverted, or natural, scrolling on it, which frustrates me. It's not a controversial statement to say that the weakest part of Samsung's tablet offerings is that they're on Android, which hasn't really worked well on tablets in, well, ever. To try to overcome some of Android's large screen shortcomings, Samsung developed X a few years ago to provide a more traditional desktop-like experience, complete taskbar at the bottom. The problem is that DeX still feels like an unfinished project. DeX's rudimentary window management makes Windows 95 feel advanced. The fact that I can't use the trackpad to select text in a web page irritates. Then there are the bigger issues, like when apps refuse to open in DeX mode, hello LastPass, or don't want to cooperate with Samsung's hacky window resizing controls, looking at you, pocket. Apps frequently just crash when I'm in the DeX environment, and if I close up the tablet and open it up later, I can expect that all of the apps I was working in will be gone. It's just not something I'd want to rely on for work every day. Also, this is exceedingly pedantic, but the mouse pointer is rotated counterclockwise a few degrees more than the one in Windows or MacOS, and it looks odd and off-putting to me. Then, of course, there is the fact that the vast majority of Android apps just kind of look stupid on such a big screen. Samsung has done a good job of making sure its own apps work well on the canvas, at least. If you bail on DeX and use it in the standard Android mode, you can use your own three apps at the same time, much like you can on the Galaxy Fold. That's nice, but it can't make up for the fact that most apps look like stretched out phone apps or don't offer support for keyboard shortcuts. The battery will not last an entire workday. If you're planning to use the Tab S7 as a daily workhorse, be prepared to charge it up often. I'm not sure if it's the high res, high refresh display, the fact that I'm bouncing between at least six different apps all day long, or what, but I've been consistently able to kill the battery in less than four hours when I use the Tab S7 Plus as a laptop. Fortunately, there's 45 watt fast charging support because I have to plug it in about two times every day. You'll probably get better battery life if you just use the Tab S7 to watch videos, read ebooks and articles, or lightly browse the web, but I haven't had it long enough to really test those scenarios fully. Stay tuned for more on that when we do a formal review. There are other parts of the Tab S7 Plus experience that will have to wait for the full review. I am not an artist, so I couldn't fully appreciate the lower latency on the S Pen. I did use it to sign a few documents, and my handwriting was as terrible as ever. Samsung has its time for it to and for it to address some of the issues I experienced this week, such as the trackpad's poor palm recognition and limited customizability. But the company says the hardware I'm using is final, so it's indicative of what you can expect when the tablet hits shelves later this year. I am much excited on Samsung improvement on their tab devices. That's all I have for you guys for the main time. Well having been said, please subscribe, like the video, comment thanks for watching see you on my next video one peace out. out.